Hi, I'm Jordan Thorne. I'm the Editorial Content Manager here at FEI TV. We're here at the Boston Innovation Festival and I'm joined here today by Frank Stephenson. He's the renowned car designer and director of design and development at Frank Stephenson Design Studio. Thank you so much for joining us today. Very welcome. So I wanted to start off by asking, you know, many refer to you as one of the most influential car designers of our time. Mm. What do you think you've done differently to kind of set yourself apart over your career? Uh, well, um, I mean, everybody has special qualities, I guess, but um, a lot of it comes down to what I would say high levels of obs obsession and passion, mainly. Um, I think uh, those are the two factors that get you pretty far in life. And uh, if you, you know, uh, play your cards right, always look for the next best opportunity to move to. Uh, don't ever be satisfied with your, your work pretty much never fall in love with it, although you want to, it's, uh, it's a death trap almost, but if you're always pushing to make something a little bit better and never really um, um, satisfied with that, that level that you think is good enough, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get far, I think. So it's important to really, really push the limits and push your, your, your creative abilities and, and again, be obsessed and, and very passionate about it. Really interesting. Mm. I mean, so you know, you've held various positions across major car companies, including Ford, BMW, and Ferrari, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. And now you own your own global product design brand. So, what drove you to start your own company, and what kind of advice would you offer somebody, uh, you know, a designer or an innovator who's aspiring to become an entrepreneur themselves? Yeah. Um, well, uh, what what drove me to to sort of leave a, a profession that I'm absolutely uh, obsessed and passionate about, which is the automotive industry and especially the design side of it, um, and I've been doing it for quite a while, three decades. Um, and, and it's been an incredibly fun ride and um, you know, not very many dips and a lot more highs than, than anything else. So um, it is tough, especially when you kind of reach the top of where you're at to want to leave the profession. Um, but I kind of made a decision after, after those three decades that I was really only I was clogging up roads with more and more cars. And that really doesn't seem to me to be the future of mobility. Mm -hmm. um, it, you're, you're helping society in a certain way, but you're really not, on the other hand, because you're, 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 creating, you're creating volume and, 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 and stress and a lot of factors in, in, in the car world that pretty much aren't seen by today's generation of kids as, as what the future should entail or, or be like. So um, I, I thought the chance is now to really make a a personal impact myself on on the world of design in such a way that um, if I form my own company I can choose the products I want to design in such a way that they do benefit society yeah. and there are a lot of things out there that you can do that still haven't been done and and it's just a matter of putting the time and energy into these specific projects and so I I thought that's probably going to make a lot more of a um, impact to society and of course satisfaction is a, is a huge part of design um, getting you know satisfaction out, out of your products being accepted and, 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 and uh, doing well in the markets but basically it's a little bit more of that hard to say or you know giving back sort of approach to to the world and, um, and I'm really fascinated with all the the um, potential projects that I, I can be doing that do move in that direction of 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 helping people to be happier in life. Yeah, that sounds great. And you mentioned before when we were chatting mm -hmm. um, about these five kind of rules that yeah. you you kind of live by or sort yeah. of work within yeah. innovation. Would you mind just telling us yeah, about no, that? Yeah, the values then? basically. I mean, when I got out of the car design business, not too long ago actually, but um, um, and I started wanting to do these things, I was getting approached by quite a few uh, companies that would ask me to, to basically set the design for their company yeah. or to create designs for them. Um, and, and, and it just became almost too much. So I really had to set, it, set up a few, not only values, but filters. And, and they're the ones that really help me to sort of stay on course and make sure I don't do something that is you know, just more about uh, uh, one thing rather than the other. So the five values, um, I'll name four. Okay. Um, <laughs> one is basically the project has to make a lot of fun. It has to be a lot of fun, so that's obvious. The other one, it has to make a difference to society. It has to bring 
society up to another level in the sense that uh, it improves the world. Mm. Uh, the third is uh, it has to be absolutely innovative. It has to bring something new uh, to the market and uh, do it in a, uh, in a better way, not just be new, but actually uh, do it in a better way. And the other one is that it has to set the bar in terms of innovation. It has to be um, the best in the market at what it is. So that's a high target to shoot at, yeah. but if we don't shoot for the high targets, we never get there anyway. So, um, I, I don't want to accept anything less, you know, in terms of what I can do. So if I say, you know, I, I want to bowl a 300 game or I want to win the World Series, I want to send a new uh, track, track and field world record or something, that's what I have to shoot for. And that, that is what drives me to, to do designs for companies that only want something that uh, basically is the best you can do at the moment with today's technology. Yeah, that's a great kind of value set to I think so, set yeah. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a difference. I mean, if you know, you get into design and at the beginning basically you're just doing what the company wants you to do yeah. and it makes sense of course, but the company's out just mainly every company out there just wants to make a profit. Yeah. It's all about money and uh, that's the way the world works and we accept that and we we all get jobs to, you know, pay the bills and, and to get by and to you know, do other things with yeah. the money if we need to. But at the same time, when you do reach a level where you're kind of recognized for what you do and you've got a pretty good track record, then it moves into another realm and, and it allows you to to, to move around into and sort of a cross, cross, um, cross segmentation of the markets where you can do products basically that, that make more of an impact, more of a different difference to society. And it just feels good to do that, yeah. you know? It's, um, it's, it's it's less egoistic, you know. I mean, it's fantastic to be able to design a you know a limited edition hypercar that maybe is uh, you know 100 people in the world can enjoy it, and most of them basically just park it in their living room or their you know 10 car garage and stare at it and don't want to drive it because the value might go down yeah. <laughs> if they put any miles on it. Um, but that's not really the way to, to I mean, they're bringing new technology to the industry because we only use high technology materials and components and. Um, and things like that to, to do these cars, but and it takes a long time for that technology to mm. filter down into everyday products. Yeah. So, you know, in a way you get a lot of gratification and pride and uh, satisfaction, obviously, from doing that. But what you want to really do at some point is to do things that, that, not that you see around the world in huge quantities, but that really make a serious uh, impact on, on efficiency and on, on taking taking design to another level that's hard because you know pretty much it's the designer the crazy designer that has to have these ideas that nobody else has and, and most of us aren't wired that way to think about something that doesn't exist or how yeah. to create something out of thin air and that's why they pay the designers the big bucks because yeah. they're all a little bit nuts but <laughs> controllable but yeah. nuts and and they have to basically think of things that don't exist, um, which is kind of like science fiction in a way, but if you can think about it in today's age, um, usually you can make it, you know, and if we have engineers that are a little bit, not all of them, good ones are not, but the uh, normal ones, kind of argue against the design, you always have this conflict between design and engineering where the, the designer, the crazy designer has an idea that engineering says is ridiculous because we can't build it. Yeah. But that's a lazy engineer. That's somebody who's not as passionate as a designer. So having that idea is first and foremost more most important. Then you hook the designer up with a, a crazy engineer too. Sort of. It sounds like you need like an innovative engineer Team, who's yeah. willing to yeah, you get kind of push boundaries. Sports, sports yeah. Fly. Yeah. Because really anything is possible. It's just a question of how much energy and, and passion you want to throw at the project. Because you know budgets are there usually, but you can find ways around what something costs to, to design and build. Um, but the cool thing is having this, this even Einstein said it, it's, it's much more important than intelligence, is creativity, because mm -hmm. without the initial spark of how to, something should be or look yeah. like or do, it doesn't matter how much intelligence, you have nothing to work with. So that first ingredient has to be a, a spark of genius of creativity to get something new in the world that, that does something that nothing else has ever been able to to do before so that's the kind of challenge I love it's yeah. just um, not redoing something but creating something yeah. from from out of thin air basically that um, 
you know, that, that uh, makes a big difference. What an incredible position to be in, mm. to really mm. be able to impact people in any way you imagine. Yeah. It sounds like an incredible Yeah, kind of yeah, it's an opportunity to do it. Career and, and, uh, and life. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I couldn't dry, draw for the life of me, you know, yeah. and uh, it, it takes, uh, you know, the other side of my brain that I, I can't even go there. And um, then they'll be absolute geniuses at moving numbers around or, yeah. or doing things that, you know, I look at and I think there's no way I could go that in that direction. Yeah. But it's the same way, I think, in, in design that you have people who are, like I said, wired to do things like this. And for them, it's very easy. I mean, I, I, I can see, you know, a lot of the guys who write songs or, or write creative stories or whatever. For them, it's the easiest thing in the world. And we admire that. Yeah. For them, you know, it's, they don't understand why people think it's so fascinating that they can create a hit song every time they sing or write the song. Yeah. Um, for me, drawing is just basically, it's, it's like talking. I just talk with my hand pretty much. I can sit down in front of a clean sheet of paper or a white sheet of paper and just start not even thinking. I draw and don't even know what I'm going to tr uh, come up with. It's kind of interesting so cool. in a certain way. And, and, it, and, and all I have to have is an idea and it's very easy to put that image that I have in my mind onto paper such that you can understand it yeah. and that it looks well, it looks good. Because to draw something that nobody likes doesn't really make any sense <laughs> yeah. either. It's not going to do well, not going to sell. But basically it's just, I think we're all, uh, wouldn't say gifted, but, but have this um, capacity to do something unique. And if you ever find it, and if the young people listening, if you find something you love doing it, just chase it and keep going for it. Because it's so easy to, to make a good living out of something that you're good at and enjoy life at that, you know, not being forced to do something yeah. that you have to work hard to, to, to be good at. Yeah. We can all be good at something, no matter what it is, but basically if you know what it is and you can discover it early enough in your career, you'd be very lucky and you can steer it, your career down that way and that's that typical, um, you won't work a day in your life if, mm -hmm. you, if you discover that. I love that advice, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if you were to look 10 years mm -hmm. into the future, mm -hmm. How do you see innovation contributing to the disruption of transportation design? In other words, what does the future of transportation look like? Oof, um, I wish I could say because you know we're all <laughs> none of us are really futurologists, but we can we can look at what where we're heading. I guess yeah. in, in 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 terms of industry and society and and environmental issues and all that. So we can kind of predict what's coming. Um, they say the best way to predict the future is to create it. So we're us as designers are in a good position to to be the best ones to be able to predict the future, I guess. Yeah. But for me, I think the world of transportation is 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 changing quite rapidly now because a lot of the kids today are not like the kids of our generation way back when they were thinking about visceral uh, feelings of driving a car, for example. It mm. was about the noise, it was about the vibration, the horsepower, yeah. speed, and all that. And, and pride and ownership of your car, for example, you know, and you had custom paint jobs or you put special wheels on the car or you, you personified or you, you, you sort of set up the interior to your taste and all that. Kids nowadays don't even want to own a car. They just want to use the car, get yeah. to where they're going, and then forget about it, you know, and then when they need another car, they'll just call up Uber or any other service, Lyft, whatever, and get to this destination. They don't want to pay the taxes or the insurance or or you know, fuel costs or anything like that. So this whole mindset of what we had is, is going away from the cars that were sort of polluting and uh, expensive to own and, and resale values and all that kind of stuff and insurance and all that uh, to where I just want to use something to get me from here to there. So ownership of cars is probably going to change in the future quite a bit and it's going to become something more like ride sharing um, or ways of, you know, that people don't mind going places with another person that they don't know yeah. with them. So that's an interesting deviation of what we have today. I mean, you know, you, you can take somebody <laughs> with you in your car, but the fact that basically you're sharing the car with somebody you have no idea with yeah. is, is going to be a whole new direction, I think, in, in mobility. So, so this sort of uh, mobile um, uh, taxi uh, slash... Um, um, don't own it sort of approach is going to become larger. And we've, we've been stuck with this age of, of industrial engines or um, what we call um, internal combustion engines and things like that, very mechanical things, propulsion to get us, get, get power to our engines. That's all changing now. The kids don't want to hear the engines. They just want to be able to get comfortably from A to B. Yeah. 
and, and they want to do things on the way. They want to enjoy their trip, so it becomes something more like not actually driving the vehicle, which... More like experiential driving. Absolutely, almost. it's all about the experience. So if we can improve the experience of the ride, and you can sort of also create the interior so it has multi-usage mm. or multi-ways multi and multi-purposes. Yeah. So basically, you can you can socialize in the interior. You can you can be entertained in the interior. You can so, I mean, there's so many different ways you can uh, create the interior of a vehicle such that you don't have to occupy yourself with the driving side of it. So that is probably going to get pushed off to being less of a important prioritization of design of the interiors of objects because um, some people enjoy driving. I can understand that, but most of us just want to relax when we're driving it's it just it takes the strain off the stress off and yeah. um, so so I think we're going to lose the um, mechanical side of the cars in such a way that they're going to become more either hybrid or, or electric pure electric mm -hmm. and at a new, new stage probably just hydrogen powered although it's very expensive but hydrogen could be more of a future than electric um, so yeah the whole generation of, of kids today are going towards vehicles that are quite different than what we have on the road today. Not less exciting, just, just moving into a different language of, of design and of automotion. Um, so for designers, it's, it's not going to change their lives. It's just going to be another direction to, to become visioneers almost. I think yeah. that's a good word because... It's a great word. Yeah, you could be an engineer, you could be a designer, but if you're a visioneer, you're basically doing both. You're creating something that doesn't exist in, in a new world. And... Um, yeah, it's it's no less exciting because we're always going to be traveling. It's the yeah. you know the history of the world is about travel, so moving from one place to another. So how do we do it more efficiently? That's what the the name of the game is: mm -hmm. efficiency and, and and not damaging the planet and and reducing the stress levels we all have when we have to go from one place to another. You know, making it as easy as possible. Even flying can be stressful because you have to get to the airport, you have yeah. to check in, you're fighting time all the time. You have luggage that you have to make sure you can get on board. Um, when you land, you still have to get to your destination. There's a lot of ways that we can improve this whole concept of moving from A to B. Yeah, sounds incredibly interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do you foster creative and innovative thinking within your own organization? And what are some of the ways that ideas are shared and implemented? Well, uh, everybody has their own ways of doing that. Yeah. Um, you can be very strict. You can be um, not strict at all. Um, the important thing is to get a team around you of people that are very good at what you do or what you're doing. Yeah. So uh, in other words, in, in, in when I try to work, I, I, I know what I'm good at, but I want to have the people around me, the best people I can find who are good at the things that maybe I'm not so good at. Mm -hmm. And and so basically the, form, the, the team that you form around you is very, very important. Nobody goes at it alone and goes from A to Z and gets a product out there like that and, and successfully gets a product out there to the market. So you basically need uh, an amazing team or the most amazing team you can manage to get around you. So everybody's very good at what they do. So that's one of the main things. The other main thing is when you do get this team together, it's the kind of uh, dynamic relationship you can build into the team such that you don't want bad apples. Bad apples are a virus and cancerous virus that just basically one guy can ruin the whole energy of a studio, mm. of a design studio. Yeah. And so you have to be careful who comes on to, into your team. And it's a very selective process. I've always taken a long time to make sure that I get the minimal size team on board. Mm -hmm. so you might think more people means more ideas, but more ideas, quantity is not what you want in design. You want quality. Yeah. So if you get guys who are good thinkers, you don't need a lot of good thinkers. You don't get 10 chefs in a kitchen. Uh, you get minestrone soup, tasteless minestrone soup yeah. if you do. So what we try to do is keep the teams as small as possible and that means you get a lot more taste and a lot more um, you know pureness in the design when you work with smaller teams and if you make sure that the the the, the, the gears so the different uh, designers in there are all <clears throat> I'd say I'd say not similar at all very different mm. but they work really well together because too many people who think the same way you get very boring products yeah. so there's nothing really to choose from that is different so what you want is, is is the biggest difference in personalities and in thinking processes from each designer but that in some way they they, they, they blend together and they work really well together because one guy I have, have an idea that 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 helps this guy have another idea and they basically together create more power yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, that kind of dynamic is really important. And you want the team to feel almost like a family. So it's like, you know, you get five different nationalities that really isn't a family, but 
basically you you want that to blend together. You want that kind of wide perspective of, yeah. of tastes and, and opinions. So you do that. You get these guys as small a team as possible, getting to think as differently as possible, but 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 working off each other. Um, and then and then what you want to do is 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 get this group and really make them happy together by going out together, by playing music in the studio as loud as we can. Um, Sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, everybody brings in food, whatever, from their country. It sounds weird, but food does a lot. <laughs> it's, it's heart is in the stomach or whatever. Yeah, it's, I believe like it. <laughs> yeah. but, but basically you try to create sort of a, a real camaraderie within the studio. Yeah. And, and when we go out, we go out drinking or we go out eating and, and we do it as a team. And you might think <clears throat> that that doesn't make a lot of sense because you want to take your work outside of work because it's too much. Yeah. But when we go out, we don't talk about work, but we try not to talk about work. But a lot of the best ideas you have for innovations are stimulated outs or, or created outside of work. Mm. You know, when you're not really thinking about work, yeah. you're relaxed. It's kind of like being under the shower best ideas to a lot of people. Why is that so true? Because you're, you're super chill. Yeah. And you're not fighting it and you're not forcing <laughs> yourself. It just comes on to you. So if you can create that that same yeah. analogy or same feeling outside of studio with a group of guys that you work with, it's amazing. I mean, it's just, it really works. And a lot of studios don't work like that. They separate, not that you want to bring your job home with you, because a lot of us do, but at the same time, if you can create that, that wonderful bond through other things. I mean, I've taken my design team to ballet, which sounds wow. weird, but at ballet, and not just ballet, but ballet practice. So we, we, we tried to get into the practice sessions of, in this specific case, the ballet uh, um, company, such that we can go in and watch them sweat and fall and create these amazing jumps and, and, and movements that basically, if we're sitting there sketching, that's inspiration for the next mm. shapes that we're working on, you know? And, and you get to the nitty gritty of it and, and that inspires you quite a bit. Yeah. So basically it's just creating a, a mood in the studio that means that it's a lot more personal than just a job. Because yeah. design is all about passion, it really is. You know? You're creating something in your brain um, and then you're putting it on a 2D sheet of paper. It's really like, like creating a person almost. You know? it's, it starts with a seed in your brain comes out and then you have to create that in 3D and when you start doing that creation of a 3D representation of your idea then it becomes really personal then that is the baby that you feel is your baby and we do these creations and usually in clay and we do models scale models first then we go to full scale models and you take a lot of ownership and pride of ownership and in, in seeing that shape that was just a, a spark in your brain yeah. that you put on paper that convinced your boss that that's the way to go becoming a 3D product that you're shaping with a sculptor, master sculptor, into something that you just want to constantly touch it. Yeah. And you're shaping it pretty much with your eyes and your hands. And then that product becomes a real, real product that you have to put out there on the market. And it kills you when the public don't like it or the press knock it because it's, 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 they're telling you your baby is not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. And, and when it is successful, it's on the opposite. And so you feel real, real pride, you know? Yeah. And, um, but of course it's teamwork, you know? But one guy has to have the idea and to carry it through with, with a lot of, a lot of obsessional mm -hmm. passion, I guess you could call it. Um, yeah, yeah, so the, 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 the profession is fantastic. You know, if anybody wants to get into the world of design and can get into it, they should, because it's, again, it's just amazing that they pay us to do this. Yeah. Know, so. Design is incredible. Yeah. Um, so to finish off, mm. could you tell me a moment, I'm sure you probably have many, but mm. maybe if you could just pick one, um, a moment in your career where you felt really proud to be a leader in this industry? Ooh, um, tough one, but um, thinking, thinking off the cuff, I guess. Um, I, I wouldn't go back too far in my past because like I said, you, I, I've never been 100% satisfied with anything I've designed. I've always felt like they've taken the pencil out of my hand and said, stop, we have to get on and build the, the, the design. Yeah. You know? So you're like, no, I've got one more idea or one more thing I want to do, and you have to stop. So nothing really in my past, although they've been successful, yeah. makes me really think that's the ultimate piece of design that I've ever done. Yeah. So, and the typical answer of like, it's the next project I'm working on or I'm going to work on. Um, that kind of is hokey pokey too. So I'd have to say that currently the project I'm working on 
one of the projects I'm working on is maybe my favorite, and that is, we spoke, I think, briefly about it. It's, um, it's a product that's coming out to the market um, soon. It'll make a huge impact, I expect, because it, it's mainly meant for everybody in society and, and obtainable by everybody in society. Mm -hmm. um, it does incorporate the highest technology we know of for this design. Um, and everybody needs it, or will, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you would use constantly. Yeah. Um, so what, what it is, is basically it's an infant car seat. So uh, there are a lot of infants that still get hurt from impacts and accidents in cars. And this is not the ultimate guarantee, but it's the closest thing we will ever have up to now that will save a child in a, in a car accident. So wow. a special car seat that basically does things or, or has a design that hasn't ever been done before um, that enables the child to be as protected as possible in, in, in the worst case. That's incredible. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah well, that. that's fantastic. Thank Thanks. you so much for sharing all your wisdom and um, knowledge. And Thanks it was great much. speaking with you. Enjoy that. Thank you Thank so much. You. Cheers.